If you've seen our video on the competitive history of Marth, you know this character has an interesting story. When he made his Smash debut in Melee 2001, almost nobody in the West had any idea who he was. The Fire Emblem franchise had not yet planted his feet in US soil and wouldn't until 2003. Interestingly, this didn't stop Marth from becoming a popular character in Melee. On the contrary, it's his popularity in Melee that was largely reasonable for Fire Emblem games making it to the West in the first place. It didn't matter where Marth was from because he was cool and competitively really good. His large range and aesthetic animations gained him tons of popularity, along with early meta dominator Ken prominently maining the character. By 2008, Marth had become a household name for any Smash player, and he remained a strong character in competitive brawl. Players liked Marth so much, in fact, that Sakurai decided to give us two of him. <laughs> well, something like that. Smash 4 introduced Lucina from Fire Emblem Awakening as a new fighter. As Marth is a distant ancestor of Lucina, she was given Marth's exact moveset and attributes, with one crucial exception. While Marth's sword is strongest at the tip and weakest at the hilt, Lucina's sword is equally powerful everywhere. This cemented Lucina as an easier, more consistent version of Marth, and there were lots of debates over who was superior in Smash 4. In Ultimate, that debate is quite dead. Lucina did get a bit better in Ultimate's engine, but her victory here comes from Marth's underwhelming presence in the game. So Lucina is basically the new Marth in Ultimate, and she's seen plenty of success in competitive play. Her incredibly simple playstyle makes her somewhat polarizing, though. Can a character that relies almost solely on pure fundamentals be top tier? That's what we'd like to ask you in our question of the day. Where do you rank Lucina? Let us know in the comments and click subscribe while you're at it. In this video, we'll take a deeper look at this seemingly simple swordswoman to understand her strengths and weaknesses. Let's just take a moment to talk about the benefits of ProGuides.com. Our website will help you up your game on your schedule with instant access to coaches and pro courses. You can even tune in to catch live class lessons with our pro instructors and play them after the class. Don't spend another frame feeling stuck. Log on to ProGuides.com today. Lucina's strengths are very straightforward, but in a way, this makes them less obvious than other good characters. She doesn't have a 0 to 50 bread and butter, she doesn't have an oppressive all-purpose out of shield option, and she doesn't have any kind of game-changing meter. What she does have is a particular set of skills. Or, you know, good sword moves. Like Shulk, Lucina has a ton of range on every move in her kit. Unlike Shulk, however, her frame data is quite impressive. Her basic spacing tools like Fair and Nair both come out on frame 6. Back air is only one frame slower at frame 7, and up air is the fastest at frame 5. Relative to their range and disjoints, Lucina's aerials have some of the best frame data in the game. It isn't just the startup though, these aerials have very low landing lag too. Traditionally, sword characters in Smash have suffered from poor cooldown and landing lag on their aerials to compensate for their range, but not in Ultimate. Most of Lucina's aerials are safe, even when spaced point blank, so you can imagine how safe they are from a distance, which they usually are spaced from. These aerials allow Lucina to excel at zoning in the most traditional sense. She isn't chucking projectiles at you or setting up some kind of complex trap. She's just walling you out with giant disjoints that have low lag. And that's similar to how she was played in Smash 4, but Ultimate gives Lucina more ways to vary her gameplay. As a character typically associated with zoning and walling out opponents, it may come off as a surprise that two of her best mains play nothing like this. Both Mr. E and Proto Banum have pioneered an aggressive, sometimes even rushdown style of Lucina, and this works better than ever in Ultimate. On the ground, Lucina has an above average run speed and one of the fastest initial dashes in the game. She can get in your face really quickly, or dash dance to weave in and out of your comfort zone. Lucina's airspeed and acceleration are fairly average, but the thing that usually forced her to play more defensively in Smash 4 was her floatiness. With a reduced jump squat animation in Ultimate, Lucina gets into the air quicker, and her aerials have less landing lag, so that predictability that comes with being a floaty character isn't so much of an issue anymore. Lucina also has a useful ground game, especially with Ultimate's mechanics allowing any action to be performed out of a dash. Down tilt is a great option for pressuring shields from a safe distance, and it's also excellent for starting tech chases. Forward tilt can KO at ledge and has enough range to cover neutral getup from around a roll distance, and up tilt is a fantastic anti-air that can kill as well. For whiff punishing, her Dancing Blade is a great option that can rack up tons of damage and gives her the option to send opponents offstage for an edge guard or into the air for a juggle. 
Although Lucina is generally lacking in niche mix-ups, she has one option that opponents can never sleep on, Shield Breaker. Lucina's neutral special does a ridiculous amount of shield damage, piercing through an almost healthy shield without even charging. Given Lucina's strong knockback on charge forward smash and Shield Breaker itself, falling prey to this move can lead to drastically early KOs. Please don't let this happen to you. Subscribe to Pro Guides right now. So, Lucina can wall you out and get in your face, but when she hits you, what happens? As we implied, Lucina is not much of a combo character. She relies on basic spacing and only gets some small combos from options like falling up air and down throw. Despite this, Lucina's range and frame data gives her a very dangerous advantage state. Between her up air and up tilt, she can juggle her opponents easily and effectively. Even more notably, Lucina is among the best edge guarders in the game. As usual, she doesn't have any kind of fancy trick to do this. She just has fast, decent, strong aerials with lots of range. Beyond this, her recovery travels very high, allowing her to go for deep offstage plays. This up B is also intangible on frame 1 in the air, making it nearly incontestable, and it can even stage stack opponents as a last resort if her edge guard was unsuccessful. Ledge trapping is also a strong point for Lucina. Her neutral air has two hits which allow her to cover multiple ledge options from a safe distance, and she has a large grab range too. Top Lucina players will keep their opponents at ledge for extended periods of time. Alright, so what's really that bad about Lucina? Oddly enough, one of her biggest strengths can also be a weakness. She's just really simple. Lucina is arguably the simplest fighter in the game, raw fundamentals in a character. This limits her to very simple gameplay in order to be effective, lacking many character-specific mix-ups. She can also be pretty boring to play, which isn't really a weakness, but can sometimes lead to even the best players running out of patience and going for more creative plays and hard reads unnecessarily. If you play competitive Smash at any high level of play, you're extremely familiar with the Lucina matchup, and you can clearly see past the character to identify your opponent's own playstyle and strategies. Lucina's floatiness also makes her disadvantage state a bit exploitable. She doesn't have the greatest options to prevent juggles besides for down air, which has a ton of cooldown. As mentioned, her aerial mobility is nothing special either, and won't be much help to avoid opponents. Also, while her getup special is a great recovery move, it doesn't go far horizontally, making her quite vulnerable to edge guards when launched far out or without a double jump. Looking at results, Lucina performed very well in the early meta. Most notably, MKLeo won Genesis 6 using Lucina for many crucial sets, including Grand Finals. He proved that the character could compete with the game's most oppressive rushdown characters, like Pichu and Fox. Shortly after, Protobana made a tear at EVIL 2019 with nearly solo Lucina. He steamrolled Light with perhaps the most infamous Lucina moment in Ultimate so far, and took out many other big players such as Kamame, who sent Leo to losers, placing 5th at a massive event. Lucina's results have calmed down more recently, especially with MK Leo retiring the character. Still, Mr. E has acquired numerous top 8 placings at major tournaments, and Proto Banum has placed 2nd at Umebura 2019, among a slew of other strong results in his region. Top players' opinions of Lucina remain positive as well. MK Leo and Sam Sora both consider her top tier, as do Mars and Esam. It isn't unanimous, but clearly, the majority of top players consider her among the best. Furthermore, Lucina's greatest strengths and weaknesses come from her transparency. She is what players make of her, but allows an amazing player to access their full skill potential, and her results in the hands of Leo confirm this. She might not be the flashiest, but Lucina is top tier. Do you agree? We'd love to hear from you, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more from Pro Guides.